My name is uh, Muhammad Yassin, and I am uh, from the University of Udine in Italy, uh, participating in a research projects uh, in economics, ecology, landscape, and territory. And the focus of this research is on the Nile Basin. The Nile Basin uh, as a one uh, territory. Uh, specifically, we are trying to investigate into the food security and nutrition within the Nile Basin. And also, we are considering environmental aspects, in particular, the urban waste within uh, the Nile Basin, solid it be or uh, liquid waste. Uh, from the agricultural, agricultural uh, in general, or from the industry, or from uh, the the residents, the the, the 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 urban residents, as well as the rural. And in this uh, month, in sixth six and seventh of October, uh, the University of uh, Udine has participated in the fourth Nile Development Forum uh, in partnership with the uh, Kainunia community and uh, news from Africa for media coverage. Uh, the forum took place, in, as I said, in uh, October 6th and 7th and uh, then followed by uh, uh, partners, development partners meeting Therefore, uh, the Nile Basin Development Forum, uh, within its uh, major theme, building sustainable transboundary cooperation in a complex uh, river basin, uh, addressing the challenges and uh, taking stock from the lessons learned and uh, exploring futures, uh, future prospects has also uh, tackled with uh, other sub-themes uh, ranging from uh, the knowledge system and uh, epistemic communities and uh, secondly on the water, uh, energy, food security nexus, thirdly on the transboundary water governance, fourth on the benefits of cooperation and risk of non-cooperation and fifth on um, on the building partnership uh, partnerships with uh, the traditional development uh, uh, partners in addition to new development partners and in addition to partners also investment uh, partners, not only development partners, but also uh, investment partners. Then uh, also it uh, discussed on the six uh, pillar or sub uh, on the hydro diplomacy in transboundary cooperation. Uh, the hydro diplomacy is very important also. Uh, sub which was uh, discussed during the forum. Uh, seventh uh, sub theme was the financing the transboundary cooperation, and last but not least, a uh, very important uh, sub theme on building resilience through transboundary cooperation, especially in context of uh, climate change and um, and successive uh, uh, natural disasters, uh, droughts, uh, floods, and other environmental risks and hazards and also on the social resilience and uh, bouncing back from the crisis uh, uh, which are uh, hitting the populations of the Nile Basin. Uh, so basically we as a research team of the University of uh, Udini led by Professor uh, Margarita uh, Tingfa Chang and uh, Professor uh, Luca Izebi from the Department of Civil Engineering and Architecture and myself. We are uh, taking stock from this uh, important forum uh, and to incorporate the knowledge gained and the information uh, shareable uh, in this forum 
in order to, to go ahead with our uh, research project. Uh, this research project is financed by the Italian government through the University of Udine uh, from 2013 up to 2015 in, within a framework of a PhD research project. And uh, luckily, uh, we had the support also of uh, the Kainune community uh, in, in Kenya and news from Africa. Uh, in Kenya in order to do uh, these interviews and this media coverage assisted by our friends uh, Roger and, um, and Peter, uh, Eric Sandy and uh, the other staff and uh, here uh, we, we managed to conduct uh, uh, several interviews with uh, two, uh, two chairs for, of the Nile based in um, the Nile uh, Council of Ministers. Uh, we interviewed the chair, uh, the current chair of uh, the uh, Nilecom uh, of Sudan. We interviewed also the chair for, of uh, Uganda. We interviewed the chair of uh, uh, the, the minister of Ethiopia. We interviewed uh, minister of, from Ministry uh, of uh, Water and Environment in Tanzania. We interviewed uh, people from the academia, uh, Professor uh, Edith from the University of Colorado. We interviewed also uh, the representative of the World Bank uh, as a major partner of uh, the Nile Basin uh, Initiative. Uh, we interviewed also uh, some uh, in, in research institutions like International Water Management uh, Institute. And uh, we interviewed also uh, uh, the representative of South Sudan, uh, um, South Sudan government, deputy uh, spokesperson of the uh, National Assembly of uh, the government of South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan as a new country within uh, the Nile Basin Initiative. Uh, and also because of it is a newly independent state uh, country. Now it is participating fully in the, com um, in the cooperation framework agreement uh, which is uh, taking shape now uh, and within this uh, uh, comprehensive uh, uh, or cooperation, uh, uh, cooperation framework agreement uh, remain only Sudan and Egypt uh, outside of this uh, initiative. However, the minister from Sudan confirms that if they manage to open uh, up the dialogue and uh, negotiation on the disputed Article 14b for, of, the, of the agreement, they will have no problem to sign the, the cooperation framework agreement and go forward in, in order to advance the development in a regional basis. That means uh, the, no, the whole Nile, uh, Nile Basin region as one uh, institution. And also the minister from Ethiopia um, confirms that they have no problem uh, in cooperation with Egypt and Sudan. And he, uh, he confirms that the uh, big infrastructure of the uh, Great Renaissance Dam, which is uh, under construction in Ethiopia, is not going to affect negatively uh, the, the Sudan and Egypt. Uh, 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 and uh, in the contrary, it is going to benefit uh, their agriculture in terms of regulation, the water flow and irrigation to, to Sudan especially. Uh, and then uh, lastly, the, um, the forum has concluded with a declaration on, on, on the forum which uh, is now available and will be shared with a wide range of uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, many um, controversials and uh, also consensus issues have been uh, addressed during uh, this uh, forum and this was, was one of the objectives in order to enhance the consensus building, uh, in order to have a shared uh, vision of, of the Nile uh, as the slogan of the Nile Basin, it is one, uh, one river, 
uh, one people and uh, one basin for uh, for for all uh, and the also one of the major issues also came to the floor was uh, uh, not only sharing the water but also sharing the benefits from from the water and the pr principle of uh, subsid uh, subsidiarity and and other other burning issues and i think we think that the dialogue and the discussion on the importance uh, and the vital role uh, of uh, the nile basin uh, will continue to be uh, in the forefront of the, the of the international uh, fora for discussion and also uh, there was little attention paid uh, also uh, to the ecological uh, foundation of the Nile Basin as uh, water and uh, land together with biodiversity of farm biodiversity, in farm biodiversity, and also sharing the climate, uh, sharing the climates and uh, sharing uh, a common vision to compact uh, the negative impacts of the climate uh, um, climate variability and uh, um, and other uh, environmental uh, challenges, and uh, that was all. Uh, what what we, we we managed to to take stock from the Nile Basin Development Forum uh, held in Nairobi, Kenya. So that is, that is all. Thank you very much. My name is Mohammed Yassin. I am a PhD candidate in Economics, Ecology, Landscape and Territory at the University of uh, Odini in Italy. And this project is funded by the University of Italy and the Italian governments. And it is focusing on three uh, pillars on the food security, environmental aspects and resource management. So according to uh, in these perspectives, we are going, uh, today we hear that Sudan is going to be engaged more in the cooperation. Uh, so, uh, how, what does that mean? More engaged, full engagement of uh, Sudan. In, uh, in, do you mean that it, they are going to uh, to enter in the cooperative, uh, the, 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 the cooperative agreement, uh, the cooperative framework agreement, or, or you are you will continue uh, cooperating outside of, of this? And then also in terms also of uh, food security, <coughs> we know that Sudan is, is highly engaged in the food security in the Arab world. Uh, so do you, do you think that engagement of Sudan in the food security of the Arab world will put more pressure on the water resources and land resources? These are these two initial questions, and then we have other two. Actually, Sudan has been uh, one of the founders and initiators of the CFA. Uh, we have been fully in the process until 2010, and we were part of the body that has been able to uh, agree on almost 12 out of 15 clauses of the CFA. Uh, only there was, as the case today, only three pending issues needs to be further discussed and clarified. So Sudan uh, is prepared to go ahead again to discuss and negotiate on the three pending issues, uh, aiming at uh, f uh, finalizing and get a final agreement on those three. And if so, uh, together with Egypt, we shall be able to, uh, to agree finally on the CFA. Uh, as uh, with regard to the food security for the Arab world, uh, Sudan has various sources of water, uh, including the River Nile, and we have water share with Egypt, we will not exceed it at all, but we have uh, non-River Nile resources, and we have groundwater, and of course, uh, as a service, uh, run, uh, I mean, rain, rain water. So we have uh, various sources of water that will enable us to contribute to the food security not necessarily only from the river Nile. So it will not going to strain or stress the uh, uh, water uses from the Nile. Nile. Okay, and another aspect, so environmental aspects, for the use of uh, heavy use of pesticides and insecticides, especially in rainified agriculture, 
and also in terms of uh, urban waste management. Most of the urban waste is dumped along the River Nile, uh, the tributaries, and with the ferry trains, it, it, it drains inside the river. So how much is the attention of Sudan and also in your capacity as the head of the ministers, uh, Council of Ministers of the Nile Basin, how much attention is given to this uh, uh, urban waste uh, uh, dumping and pesticides and insecticides usage in irrigation uh, in order to guarantee the, the integrity and, and the health of the water basin. Although the environmental issues lies under the uh, governors of another ministry, uh, but still uh, what I am fully aware of that uh, in Sudan we are not yet intense in using chemicals and uh, this very much seri uh, negative or uh, uh, serious uh, urban waste. Uh, most of the waste now in the urban areas are remains of food and all this. It's not that complicated chemical thing, but for the future, we need to be strict on this. And I think there is a process now, especially around Khartoum, to uh, make use of the waste in power generation. And uh, this might turn the waste into an economical uh, process that will encourage uh, the uh, urban people to even sell out uh, against cost or against price their waste. And this may be the most useful and efficient tool that will uh, make the people uh, preserve the River Nile. Otherwise, should you continue just by law and instruction, might not work, as, uh, I mean, properly. But to turn the whole story upside down and tell the people, bring all your waste, we'll buy it, and we'll use it for four generations, I think this is the most efficient way. So uh, we are doing this under our capacity as a ministry responsible for electricity, and we are in good engagement with the uh, city of Khartoum, I mean, state of Khartoum, to try and work out a, a sort of uh, power station that will use the waste for power generation. Uh, another issue on, it is not only about uh, water, but also lands and all the ecological foundation. Uh, and for the lands, there are some uh, argumentation on the land, large scale land acquisition, what is called the land grabbing in the, in the jerk. Uh, it, so it is not only uh, land grabbing but resource grabbing. So Sudan and most of the uh, Ethiopia and other uh, Nile, uh, Nile Basin countries have this phenomenon of uh, long-term uh, uh, land uh, lease and so on. Do you, don't you think that is not going to jeopardize uh, the smallholders and the farmers? in terms of uh, food security and nutrition and also in terms of uh, livelihood for these people? I not necessarily uh, see any conflict right now. Uh, there are, I mean, major projects uh, well underway uh, in good, more or less uh, acceptable operation and mood, such as Jazeera, Suki, Rahad, uh, many, like 12 big complexes of agriculture owing to almost more than 90% of the aggregable land. And there are maybe in the range of 10% of such type of lands owned by individuals, uh, both in small, medium, and uh, large scale. But it is not that influential element that will impede the pro progress on uh, land uh, uh, development. And uh, by today also, the, I mean, large uh, plantation or uh, big developments is more now feasible than small, uh, fragmented small lands of five fat dams or ten fat dams. This is not the style of today. We have to be a little bit bigger to organize it in a cooperative way that will render more benefits to the owners of the lands. So in order to be big, you have to establish big infrastructures, <coughs> like uh, establishing dams and irrigation uh, facilities and so on. And also you will need power. So within the Nile Basin today, we hear that there are, plan there are plans for other 25, uh, maybe more or less dams along the 
along the river, the, the Nile. Uh, and we know that in Ethiopia now there's this uh, big uh, mega dam, which is also may, will have its impact on the the, the Nile. So, in, in your capacity as head of minister, council of ministers of uh, water for the Nile Basin, how do you see this expansion of these big infrastructures uh, in, uh, or these dams with different sizes? It is going to generate conflicts, or it is going to enhance the uh, the development and the growth of the people? I mean, uh, it, it of course we can create uh, trouble in case people are not in good understanding or uh, they have not commanded the studies in a, in a regional aspect. Uh, people may always feel uh, not consulted and uh, they may uh, scare or afraid of any negative impact that might follow. But any project that is planned and studied uh, on a regional perspective uh, with transparent data and share of uh, all analytical tools that uh, will give answer to any uh, interest or query or uh, any point of concern. Uh, it should be a good project then and it will work. But the uh, problem is always not the project itself rather than the perception how this project can be adversely affecting any interest so people they take a uh, firm position against but uh, should the project be understood uh, properly well uh, carefully studied on a regional uh, perspective uh, it shouldn't be a problem it will work so the regional perspective means <coughs> uh, transboundaries that yes, means yeah. you don't consider the boundaries between these uh, not to consider basic. the boundary, so but to have the impact, both upstream and downstream of, of any project. Mm. And uh, the impact on the region at large and on the basin, uh, especially the relevant riparians. So uh, this is the impact that people would, would want. How do you see the Nile Basin initiative or the Nile Basin Commission or the Nile Basin organization within the other regional economic communities? No, it is doing fine as long as it's transitional uh, or institution. Uh, it is doing well so far. What has been achieved over the past 15 years is quite okay. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. Minister, for thank your you. time. Thank you. So uh, I'm doing my PhD on the Nile Basin issues, okay. uh, focusing on uh, food wastage and urban waste and resource management, and that's why today I'm here in this forum. Very forum. good. And, uh, it's the right forum to be. Yeah, it is the right forum. Yes, uh, even. Uh, and uh, uh, now I'm going to ask you some uh, questions uh, or regarding uh, the food security, food uh, security and nutrition within the Nile Basin. And then a second question on the urban waste or the environmental aspect in the in the Nile Basin. Uh, the third question will be around the resource management within the Nile Basin in wine basin perspective and the role of in, uh, responsible investments within the Nile Basin. And the last question will be a focus on the infrastructures uh, within the Nile Basin. So principally these are the, fi okay. the five uh, basins. So uh, welcome Mr. Gustavo and, uh, from the World Bank. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, the Nile Basin uh, is, is witnessing a heavy demographic growth. The population of the Nile Basin went from 60, from 60 million to the current 450 million. And in 2050, in 20, in 2050 or 2010, uh, 2000, it is expected to reach almost uh, 888 million. That means it is going to put more pressure on uh, on the demand for water and land and other uh, mm -hmm. uh, res connected resources. So, how do you see it from the World Bank uh, perspective? How do you see this? How do you see the Nile role in playing, uh, uh, which will play in order to guarantee the food security? for the people of the Nile Basin, first of all. 
No, thank you very much. The Nile is critical for, for water security, for food security, and the energy security in the, in the countries of the Nile Basin. Uh, clearly, uh, water will contribute to food security through uh, in expanding irrigation in the, in the countries of the, of the basin, through providing water for hydropower generation, but also, since water is the vehicle through which climate change is transmitted, it will be critical to manage the, the waters of the Nile proper, properly to, to, to build resilience ag against climate change. So, um, I was saying today in my keynote that three of the ten Nile Basin countries are among the poorest in the world with per capita incomes of between 200 and 500 US dollars per year and that means that uh, a lot needs to be done to enhance the quality of life of the populations of the Nile Basin countries and uh, clearly uh, to reduce um, vulnerability of the poor of the basin food security and energy security are, and water security why not are critical so this call this is an urgent call for an efficient management of the of the water resources of the Nile Basin. Okay, on the environmental aspect and the Nile, uh, the Nile Basin water uh, uh, water uh, pollution and so on, uh, the the use of uh, insecticides and herbicides and uh, and other uh, other chemicals in agriculture heavy use, and also the non managed uh, urban waste. Uh, most of the waste in the, these African countries are left with uh, around the tributaries of the River Nile, and with the ferry train it goes inside the the, the river. Mm -hmm. And how do you see this as uh, uh, the importance of this challenge uh, in order to guarantee uh, wise and sustainable management for the water? Sources. No, I think it's another critical challenge. We were talking before about uh, availability of water and, and the, the issue that you're raising, which is the environmental and water quality implication of the use of water, is another critical challenge for the Nile Basin countries because as the societies develop, as the economies grow, as they are more urbanized, more pollution is generated. This not only happens in the Nile Basin but uh, around the world and it's the path that many developed countries have followed. You know, they have developed, they have grown, and they have generated more contamination, more pollution. And the same I we, are, we are already seeing around some of the large urban centers in the Nile Basin. The main capitals uh, discharge wastewaters to the Nile River or tributaries, not always with adequate treatment. And, uh, and, and so, you know, there is also a call and a need for action regarding water quality protection. Uh, I was talking about point sources such as, as, as cities, but also industries. And, uh, and you mentioned before the non-point sources such as agriculture and other sources of pollution that requires good regulation and enforcement of the regulations that most of the countries already have in place. So yes, it's another challenge because talking about availability, not only you want access to water, but you want access to water of a good quality and for that, the countries need to start doing more work in terms of controlling the pollution coming from cities, industries and agriculture. Good. And concerning the resources, uh, you know the, the ecological foundation base uh, of the foundation, the, um, the ecological base is water and land. Uh, and so we cannot only consider water in separation of land. In most of these African uh, or uh, Nile Basin countries, there is this phenomenon of large-scale land acquisition, or what they call it, land grabbing, or water grabbing, mm -hmm. or resource grabbing, or whatsoever. Though these countries sustain that these are investments uh, which may generate benefit for the people uh, from, from the World Bank perspective, we know that the, the World Bank is, is, uh, is, is financing uh, investments, not in that, in that, in, in that direction, but how can uh, the World Bank uh, investments be responsible in order to counter uh, to counter um, counterface these these challenges for these countries, and uh, then 
also in terms of uh, infrastructures. Uh, the World Bank, we know that, is financing uh, important uh, infrastructures like uh, the Renaissance Dam in, uh, in, in Ethiopia. No correction, we are not, the World Bank is not involved in financing those that dam. Okay, good. This is good correction because this is why the, the huge infrastructure. So in terms of responsible uh, and responsible investments in these countries in order to, to address this challenge of large, large scale land acquisition facing the people. Mm -hmm. what, how do, what do you, uh, you say in this perspective? Well, uh, if I think it's, if, if it's a very collection also it's, is welcome. Also. It's it's a uh, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. It is a very good question, mm -hmm. and the world the World Bank has very solid and stringent standards uh, in terms of social and environmental safeguards. Any investment financed by the World Bank, even in many cases uh, studies. In some cases, we don't even finance the, the infrastructure. We finance the studies required to comply with very strong um, safeguards analysis, including environmental and social impact assessments. And by doing it that way, we guarantee that if there are impacts, they have to be mitigated. They have to be controlled, mitigated, and eventually compensated. And the examples you were giving about land grabbing, the bank is not involved in any project supporting those types of activities, but you also mentioned infrastructure, and in any case uh, of an infrastructure project financed by the bank, it requires a solid uh, a preparation of environmental and social studies. And it's a requirement for the bank to approve any project that there are uh, strong environmental and social impact assessments in place. Okay. And last question, please. Yeah, the last question on the multi-donor trust fund. Uh, yes. Which, uh, now it is ending. So, uh, what are the prospective future prospective if you can mention to us? And, of course. Uh, and also engagement of other of course other stakeholders in the Nile Basin. Of course. Yeah. Yes. I'm. Um, I, I think throughout the week you will hear uh, different development partners mentioning the initiatives in place to support the Nile Basin most of which through the MBI, but also through other organizations in the basin. In the case of the World Bank, the World Bank is administering a, a new multi-donor trust fund called CIWA. CIWA stands for Cooperation in International Waters in Africa. And CIWA currently supports uh, four basins uh, across the continent, the Nile, the Zambezi, the Niger, and the Volta, but also other initiatives led by regional economic communities and one of the priority basins for CIWA is the Nile, the Nile Basin. And we have already a program and important investments in place supported by CIWA in the Nile Basin and we foresee continuation of the support in the future uh, from CIWA to the Nile Basin. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. My pleasure. So I work for um, a research program, which is a CGIAR, Research Program on Water, Land and Ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And the International Water Management Institute leads the research program. But we work together with about 11 other partners because we belong to the CGIAR consortium, yes. which is a global agriculture research partnership. And so IMI, so IWMI, is one of those research centers. And so this research program is basically based together with IMI and all these other research partners um, who are from across the system, including FAO, which is more of an implementation agency because we do the research. And our research basically focuses on ensuring this whole, you know, it's ensuring, it's uniting agriculture and nature for improved livelihoods, for improved food security, you know, ensuring that, because agriculture is often seen as the reason for degrading the environment. But often it's a lack of knowledge, it's a lack of understanding the various dynamics, it's looking at a variety of stakeholders and understanding what sort of incentives need to be provided for them. So we as a program basically look for uh, providing evidence-based research towards better informed decision making. But we, and we work in areas from, so we do work on resource recovery and reuse. Uh, we look at water smart agriculture. Uh, we look at managing resource variability because of uh, you know, climate change variability, improving resilience of smallholder communities. Um, then we look at land and water productivity and all of that we look through with this ecosystem based lens. So ensuring that always, you know, an effect on one doesn't take away from the other. Decision uh, analysis models.
so that plugs into our overall framework of you know this evidence-based research that we do. And I think you really do have to look at this holistic approach and you have to identify different entry points and really think about what are, you know, who are the stakeholders in those entry points for change, who are your change agents. And one of the issues I think that we always face, whether it's Africa or Asia, is the presence of weak institutions. So you do really have to think about, you know, how do you build up the capacity of those institutions? You know, how do you provide evidence-based research that then helps them make better planning, better investment decisions, you know? Um, that then trickles down into, you know, uh, for lack of word, in, into that overall ecosystem, into the people, the natural resources that are ava available to ensure that all of that is sustainable and to ensure that smallholders today, you know, who are facing things like climate change variability, um, you know, can, are resilient and are able to cope with those sudden shocks. So we really look at it from an overall uh, a holistic approach, I would say. Yeah, and uh, also on uh, the relationship also now, because now you have uh, also focus on the health. Mm -hmm. And uh, the health now, uh, the health uh, risk and hazards are of transboundary right. nature. Mm -hmm. So how can the Nile Basin accommodate this in its policy and, and your institution also, I see, I, saw, I see that it was focusing on that So issue. the CGIAR overall, yes. uh, one of its main goals, so it has four main um, goals in terms of what it likes to influence mm -hmm. or, or contribute to, sorry, not influence, but contribute towards. So that's improving food security, um, improving health and nutrition, and better uh, sustainable research management, right? And improving livelihoods. So that's reducing poverty, yeah. right? And so through the, the nutrition component, what they really try to look at, or we as a whole try to look at is, you know, uh, better improve crops. The other side of it is also looking at, for instance, we as a program, WLE, we look at um, wastewater. You know, so it's looking at wastewater guidelines. We work with the WHO in terms of actually providing safe use of wastewater guidelines. We also look at it in terms of it's something like this. We call it turning waste into wealth, where it's really looking at different actors along the value chain, thinking about more than just water, but thinking about energy, thinking about the different resources that go into it. Um, and, and, you know, and talking about, okay, you know, what, what are the different options that, you know, um, entrepreneurs along that value chain might have. Um, if, if there are processing plants that are broken and so there's this issue of sludge, you know, uh, what, is, what is the information that you need or what are the incentives that those people need in order to make sure that those treatment plants are functional? Uh, it's looking at fertilizer pellets. Uh, that are just as good as you know non-organic fertilizer, so that people will start using you know these these more. So it's providing alternatives that people can use that is safe, and and ensuring that you look at the implications of your actions on uh, of the system as a whole, which I think is really key. Yeah, for well, concerning the waste, now the waste is not uh, is I can say quasi not managed within the Nile Basin mm -hmm. because most of the urban waste is dumped along the tributaries right. uh, or outside of the towns and so on. So with the ferris range, it goes inside the, the river and the right. So have you noticed any awareness about this danger? I, I think for that because I the, the researchers who actually work on this would probably be better placed to answer that. Yeah. So that's something that I can put you in touch with them yeah. um, because we actually, in terms of this process, Program. We work in different areas. So there's sites in, in India, in, uh, in Africa, so in, in Accra, and now in Kampala as well. Uh, and then there's also the Latin America component in Peru. Uh, so it's really looking at, um, so what they're trying to do is better, you know, wastewater guidelines. It's looking at really, we call it resource recovery and reuse, right? Because it's looking at um, how can you make something, you know, out of waste that will benefit you because then that gives you an incentive, right? Um, but I think those researchers would be better placed to answer that question, so I can always put you in touch and with them. also for the focus on biodiversity also? Yes. Within basin, basin wide Yes, basin. yes. So for biodiversity, uh, biodiversity, we actually have 
uh, Biodiversity International, which is one of our partners on the research program on water, land and ecosystems. And they really look at, so that's how they plug into us in terms of that ecosystem based approach, you know, because it's ensuring uh, that, you, that you see these various components um, and, and you see how they all work together, you know, and it's ensuring why biodiversity is good for you. So also uh, concerning the demography of the Nile Basin, mm -hmm. it's increased from almost uh, 100 million in the 50s to yeah. So, million but that's now. uh, but the grow but it's, it's an issue that everybody uh, faces, right? Because yeah. it's a growing population, yeah. so it's being able. Do you see that it is a challenge or opportunity? It can be. It depends. It can be seen as both, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it is a challenge in the sense that as you have an increasing population you have all these other consequences of it, which is, you know, you might have mail out migration because of migration to cities, right? Then you have your basic thing of you need increased food production. And increased food production then often means sustainable intensification, which is considered, you know, a dirty word. But, you know, but you look at that sustainable component of it. And in order to make intensification sustainable, you need to look at it from an ecosystem-based approach. So, and, and then, and you also will have probably, um, you know, you have diverse diets, you know. So it's really looking at, once again there, it's about incentives that can lead to behavior change as well. So you can see it from both sides of the coin. You nominated the sustainable intensification. Some people see it, uh, especially this, uh, the conservative uh, school, mm -hmm. agroecologist uh, school, see it as, uh, as a hazard right. for the culture and uh, for security and so on. You share the same vision or you have a different vision? No, well, we, no our vision yeah. is basically is this right there. It's about uniting agriculture and nature towards poverty reduction. So it's not looking at one. You have to look at both. You can't look at one without the other in order to achieve you know, healthier communities because we, we like this. We, we want this. We want prosperous communities. We want productive food systems and healthy land. And in order to achieve those things, you have to look at all the components in the system. But these are small, small scale uh, farmers or family right. farmers. While in the Nile Basin, most of the agricultural schemes now are oriented towards large scale and this large scale land acquisitions right. or international investments, land and resource grabbing and right. all this stuff. Now it is jeopardizing the livelihood of these uh, small scale farmers. Right. And yeah, so, so for them, so it's providing where, them with where, where better... Where is the exit? Pardon? Where is the exit? No, so, so there it's really providing those larger institutions mm -hmm. because, I mean, it's, it's not that they're not aware of, you know, the consequences, yeah. but sometimes it's also giving them enough, you know, and that's what we, we would do. That's an entry point for us okay. in terms of providing the research. So it's showing, okay, look at the degraded land. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a, you know, that's a cause. Mm -hmm. And how can you go about sort of not... You can't really reverse it. You know, but what, what's an alternative to that? And that's, that's our mandate, is to really provide that evidence base. How big is this project? Uh, With us? Well, we're a 12-year program. Okay. We're a 12-year program. We mm -hmm. work in currently in four focal regions. Mm -hmm. So in the Volta, in the Nile, in mm -hmm. the Ganges, and the Mekong. Okay. And we're just really starting to get our projects together and organize them um, you know, in order to make sure that we've got this new approach. Do you think that from these there are positive experiences which can be transmitted to the Nile Basin from the other yeah. studies? And yes, definitely, because that's one thing as a program that we do really, we promote cross-learning mm -hmm. um, and we really like, you know, looking beyond just our organization and our institutions as well, you know, and really looking at local partners. Um, and so a lot of our projects, for instance, are like I was telling you, even with this, you know, this looks at, we've got sites in India, we've got sites in Africa, and we've got sites in Latin America. Those are three very different areas, and which would have, uh, you know, different resource issues, different challenges. And there it's really about that cross-learning and looking and identifying, you know, what are the challenges and, and how have you worked through to them. So. Good. Do you think about the research funding, do you think that the global uh, community or the international organizations are uh, pledging sufficient funds for the well, research? Well, I think they make you accountable for research because yeah. research is not just about research, yeah. right? Research yeah. is ultimately in order to make change yeah. and impact the people on the ground. Yeah. So with us, our donors really, they've, 
for the CGIAR as a whole, they've asked that we look at all our projects, uh, our research focus, uh, with a move towards outcomes and impact. And if we're not able to show that, then uh, our funding doesn't come through. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm based in Ghana, in, in the uh, International Water Management Institute, yeah. West Africa office, mm -hmm. um, and my job is, is kind of the interaction between, between the research mm -hmm. and, and the decision makers. So whether that's you know, a farmer in his, his or her field, or all the way up to a policy maker at the national level, or African Union level, that kind of thing, and it's, it's the, my job is, is working out the, the correct interface between the research and the, and the policy, if you like, and the decisions that are going to be made. So informing those decisions at whatever level it's going to be. And that's helping to make sure that our research is really, um, you know, has, has traction and, and is, is being made use of further down the line to make, it, to make sure it has value uh, and that it's relevant to the kind of stakeholders that, that we're hoping will make use of it. You know, the beneficiaries in the field, but also the policy makers at the national level as they as they think through where the future of, of where they would like their country's policies to go and the development trajectories that a particular country is making. So the management pattern of the phase in, in, in the areas of your focus there. Mm -hmm. Is it similar? Are there similarities or differences between the Nile Basin? Um, well, it's probably, better, it's, it's, yeah. it's probably better for the researchers themselves to answer that because they're the ones with a particular focus on it. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I work quite a lot with our researchers that are doing research on the Volta. Mm -hmm. And for example, we have um, uh, research looking at, at re-optimization of some of the dams, like the Akasombo Dam and Bong Dams, to see if there's other flows that could be used uh, to help you know, um, support the ecosystem in a better way. Because obviously, if you have a dam, there's been quite a strong impact. Most dams will have that. So it's looking at, you know, is there a different flow regime that, that could be uh, used to help facilitate uh, some of the ecosystem services like sort of fisheries or um, clam fishing and things like that, and then supporting livelihoods from that. So I suppose that's, that's you know, there's different parts of the Nile and there's different parts of the Volta and there's some, possibly some similarities along the way. But I think really in, in water resource management, you, you do have to be quite specific um, about the area you're looking at. And, and there may be crossovers, uh, but you need to be quite specific about, about where you're looking at. So considering Nile Basin mm -hmm. uh, perspective, we cannot be speci specific because it is huge territory. Absolutely, and, and many different sections along many the way. Sections. But I, I think you can learn, I mean, as, as one of my colleagues maybe has been saying, and what we're hearing with today, you know, you can learn from the experiences of other basins and see what might be applicable at certain points along the Nile, um, or, or looking at a wider group as well and seeing what's, what's applicable to the whole river basin. And that's one of, I mean, the Water, uh, Land and Ecosystem CRP research program is looking at that, so that's why we're looking at four different, re um, uh, four different river basins and seeing you know, what, what research and what learning might be applicable from one to another and, and seeing where those conjunctions are. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure, yeah. pleasure. Good morning, Professor. I am, my name is Mohamed Yassin and I am from the University of Udini in Italy. Good uh, morning. I am doing research on the Nile Basin economic, ecology, landscape, and territory. And uh, thank you for accepting uh, to interview you. Uh, today I'm going to ask you a few questions about the Nile Basin River and some aspect about the uh, Colorado Basin in comparative approach. So okay. the first question uh, is about concerning the food security and nutrition in the Nile Basin. And uh, you know that there's a growing demography uh, in the Nile Basin and the population of the Nile Basin went up to 450 million uh, currently and is ex expected by 2,100 to be around 888 million. So how do you see it in this perspective of uh, rapid uh, demographic growth and increasing urbanization? and major pressure on the resources? Well, I think the, the population explosion is truly stunning. It's, it's amazing and, uh, you know, and I think that it's a real question as to what population the river and the economics, the water supply and the food supply can actually sustain. And um, uh, so, and I'm not really familiar with um, you know, with the economic projections for the area, um, but certainly the water supply and power supply, both of those things are extremely important. Power is, uh, people don't maybe always understand the, 
criticality of the power supply because there can be no economic development without power. And of course, in the Nile Basin, um, the water and the power are very, very closely connected. So, uh, so this all leaves us with you know, big questions as to what the future will hold because, um, uh, because of this population pressure. Um, uh, that's more of a question than an answer, I'm afraid. Uh, I, I think that I share um, the, the concern of, of everyone, certainly all of Africa and the rest of the world, of what's going to happen in this area. And I, the, all the more reason that people understand um, how very, very important it is that attention and um, study and research comes to this area and that some possible plans are made um, about what the future can be. We can't just leave it to chance, yes. uh, obviously. Good. Also, this in terms also of uh, quantity of water and which is used. Uh, in terms of quality uh, of the water, li little attention is, pay is paid to that in the terms of uh, the, the urban waste and its management is left uh, to is the, uh, at the border of the tributaries and major cities are not managing uh, with the ferry trains, so most of the garbage are uh, automatically dumped inside the river basin. So how, how, how important this issue, you think, the environmental aspects and water quality? Because uh, if there is a conflict on the water share, uh, but the water quality is deteriorated, then we are sharing nothing. Uh, yeah. How do you see that? V very true, and I'd like to point out that one of the major water quality issues is also um, agricultural returns, especially in Egypt, I think this is true in terms of the salinity. Um, of the system and um, so but of course urban um, pollution is very important also uh, these uh, issues have to be uh, the the urban uh, water quality um, treatment uh, problem can be solved it's it's much uh, more tractable um, to solve that problem than it is to solve the agricultural water quality problems the, those are much more difficult um, so, due to uh, fertilizers and uh, chemicals and uh, yes, in, pesticides and so on. Yes, yeah. and also just the um, you know the water uh, picks up natural salinity as it goes through the ground and comes back um, to the okay, river as I, well. I I come to another question on the common management of the of the basin between the Barian states. If you can compare it to Colorado case. And uh, now the, the, we, we know that you, you talk about the uh, uh, shortage uh, storage mm -hmm. agreement. So how do you see that uh, applicability to the Nile Basin? There, there are, are there similarities or differences between the two, the the, two cases? Certainly there are. Yeah. There are some differences in that in the United States we're all part of one country and um, maybe it's a little bit easier to overcome political differences. Um, but um, there are important similarities too, especially with respect to how the problem should be attacked. In other words, um, the, the uh, bringing to bear analysis, for example, and you know technical um, problem solving, I think in both cases is similar. Uh, you, in both cases, um, all the parties need to come to the table with the same technical and analysis tools, the ability to have the data to understand what the trade-offs are and to be able to see the system as a whole, to understand uh, system optimization and, um, and you know, how that can be achieved. And so maybe in terms of uh, solving the problems, the approach is similar in both cases. Um, so I, I think that's the, the commonality. That's what we want to take away from the comparison with the, with the Colorado River. Of course, Colorado River also has Mexico involved, yeah. and that is very, very similar to the multinational um, uh, situation in the Nile Basin. And um, so there again, we're able, through the use of technical and analysis tools sharing, to overcome problems 
uh, with our negotiations with Mexico. Of course, that can happen also in the Nile. If, if you know, and in the uh, the current efforts by NBI are such a great start in in that direction. I I think that um, that if there can be some momentum and more energy put into taking forward this effort um, that NBI has started, um, it, it just shows so much promise. Yeah, that, that means we have to be optimistic about the Nile Basin. Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we must be. We must just continue to, to think about how to solve the problems and to know that it's possible. Okay, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it, it's my pleasure. Perspective of the Nile Basin, I would like to ask you some questions about the food and nutrition security at Basin level, mm -hmm. uh, Basin wide level. So now there is concern about the growing demography in uh, in the Nile Basin. This can be seen as an, a challenge or a threat or also an opportunity for the Nile Basin. And also there's issue of hunger and at the same time food wastage along the value chain. Mm -hmm. So what is your perspective in this? Actually, the demography, uh, personally, I don't uh, uh, see as a threat. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of possibilities uh, to overcome uh, the challenges with regard to uh, uh, demography. The uh, number one is how to utilize the resources that we have. If we simply uh, increase uh, the productivity of the basin, uh, the, the, the demography the issue is not a challenge. This is uh, number one. Uh, number two is uh, we have to uh, start proper utilization of our resources. For example, uh, water. Every farmer and uh, every pastoralist in the basin can uh, harvest uh, rainwater uh, during the rainy season and uh, can use uh, during the, d the dry season. One of the problems that we have in the basin is we are poor in utilization of uh, the water resources. The, with regard to big uh, um, infrastructure for to compact uh, food security is to construct uh, dams for uh, large scale, medium and uh, small scale uh, irrigations. Uh, if, w if we do this, Demography uh, is not a problem, it, it rather it, it is an opportunity. We can uh, increase the uh, market, uh, you can increase the uh, labor force, uh, so uh, there, is, there is a way to, to tackle uh, this uh, problem. Uh, th th this is the, the way how I look at it to the demography issues. Uh, with regard to the utilization of the resources in the basin, uh, cooperation is must. Uh, our cooperation is a loose cooperation. Uh, we have to strengthen this cooperation. Uh, through cooperation, we can do a lot of things. The other uh, the very important thing is we have to create a very uh, strong uh, institutions. Uh, as you know, uh, some countries, they have already signed CFA. Yes. Two countries, uh, Ethiopia and Rwanda, already ratified, and uh, the, some other countries also expected to ratify CFA. Uh, after the ratification of the CFA, we will have a commission to tackle the challenges of the, the basin. So this will be the Nile Basin Commission? Yeah, the, 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 the Nile Basin Commission will challenge the difficulties in the basin. Now, uh, in the basin there are a lot of uh, conflicts, there are a lot of uh, losses, there are a lot of uh, watershed management. The basin needs an institution which can manage these all things. Okay, thank you. On the environmental aspect in concern <coughs> of the waste, uh, the urban waste, either solid waste or uh, liquid waste, and also the industrial uh, waste, uh, we notice that uh, it is not well managed it's in most of the basin countries and uh, the, the, the urban waste is dumped outside of the towns or maybe along the tributaries and with the ferris rains it goes inside and that is uh, maybe be a hazard for the water quality in the, in the basin. 
So how do you see this as a, as a, as a challenge? As so environmental we, aspects and hazards of that? All projects uh, must be environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. If the, the projects do not uh, uh, be uh, environmentally and socially uh, friendly, mm -hmm. uh, there is no uh, way to start the construction of the the project is after all we are working to benefit uh, our uh, society uh, and uh, to uh, to keep our environment very healthy these days uh, wastes are uh, uh, a source of energy so uh, in, in my in, in in my country the we have a project is waste to waste to energy project mm -hmm. through this project we are converting the waste to energy mm -hmm. so other african countries also uh, have to start waste to energy the development uh, in this case they can easily manage their waste okay on uh, the issue also of the resource management the common resource management uh, this, the, the nile basin is focusing on, on the water but also we have problem with the land so the land and the water constitute the uh, ecological foundation for all. So in, in this perspective, there are uh, some countries are calling large scale uh, investment, land acquisition. Some, some people denote it as land grabbing, some denote it as uh, water grabbing. In Ethiopia, the case also Ethiopia there is heavy investments in that aspect. So, do you see this as an opportunity for growth for Ethiopia, or 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 you see it is as as a as a challenge, especially for the small scale farmers and family farmers? First of all, there is no land grabbing in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. We are doing uh, appropriate uh, investment. Mm -hmm. What we are doing is uh, to benefit at, uh, our society. Mm -hmm. If something that do not benefit our society, that we don't do. Mm -hmm. After all, what we do is to benefit uh, our community. Mm -hmm. With regard to large investments, it has it is, uh, rules and the procedures. We study environment and the social uh, impact uh, assessment mm -hmm. through this uh, study we accordingly uh, implement uh, any any impact uh, any impact uh, the, of course any impact has its own mitigation that mm -hmm. we the, we always do mm -hmm. and we continue the, the doing the investment is from the small to be large mm -hmm. so the 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 problem is not the the size uh, of the the investment mm -hmm. in ca if even if there is a case in uh, somewhere the problem is the way how to manage the the investment mm -hmm. in ethiopia there is a proper policy uh, and uh, good uh, the investment management because of this uh, the people are benefiting out of the the investment with regard to the basin as a whole uh, a lot of uh, initiatives uh, and a lot of activities has, have been already the, uh, started. Through this initiative, uh, I think the, the, there will be uh, a progress. For example, in Ethiopia, uh, with regard to land use administration and uh, soil and uh, water conservation, we have already started community mobilization and uh, we've, uh, we achieved very d dramatic uh, outcomes. Mm -hmm. So we will continue uh, in such a way and uh, uh, benefit our community. Okay, last question on the infrastructures. Yeah, you, we see that the Great Renaissance Dam uh, project will be, will change, uh, will bring a significant change for the Ethiopian uh, agriculture, Ethiopian uh, power uh, power supply and at the same time it is going to give uh, opportunities of employment for the people and development and growth uh, for that but other uh, other uh, other riparian countries are seeing it uh, the way they want to see it uh, uh, do you think that the fear uh, also they want to put some issues on the environmental or ecological impact of this dam uh, which will be huge dam and will, will generate uh, 6,000 mega, megawatts. 
So what is your perspective in this? And do you encourage <coughs> other countries also to erect uh, dams like uh, South Sudan, which has no has no dams, uh, on, uh, has no sufficient energy supply and so on? Uh, we construct the uh, Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam to generate electricity. This uh, dam is not for uh, irrigation in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It uh, may be uh, important for irrigation in uh, Sudan. Mm -hmm. uh, environmentally and uh, socially, uh, this, this dam is uh, designed to acceptable world uh, class uh, uh, farmers, yeah, standard. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't have any the fear with regard to that. With regard to downstream countries, uh, we believe the dam will benefit uh, Sudan and uh, Egypt. Sudan already the, uh, understood this dam uh, will benefit their economy and uh, their populations. We are insisting the Egyptians to understand the benefit of the GERD that is going to give them. So uh, with regard to your, your countries, of course, if they have uh, sufficient study and uh, if they need to construct a dam for their uh, power generation and their irrigation, they are welcome uh, mm -hmm. because uh, they have to develop their, uh, their resources. Yeah. So we always uh, encourage and appreciate any country to just uh, develop uh, the uh, irrigation and uh, uh, hydropower to to overcome their their difficulties, uh, the the South Sudan are welcome to do their own uh, development. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Minister. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. Yeah, please to interview you. Right. Okay. Welcome, Minister. Thank, thank you, you for thank you. Uh, for coming thank and, you very uh, much, and yes. giving us this opportunity to interview you. Yes. My name is Mohammed Yassin. I am from the University of Udini in Italy. Yes. Okay. And I'm engaged in a research uh, project on the Nile Basin. Uh, involving economics, ecology, landscape and territory. Uh -huh. And uh, the Nile Basin uh, Forum, Development Forum, uh, was a good uh, opportunity just to interview some of the head policy makers and uh, key informants. Uh, our first question concerning the food security and nutrition yes. uh, at a basin-wide level. Yes. Uh, some countries or, um, in, the, in the Nile Basin are suffering severe food security and nutrition and hunger or maybe undernutrition or malnutrition and uh, in your vision how do you see in terms also of uh, food availability and food also food wastage yes, uh, yes along yes. the value chain how do you see that from a basin wise perspective how do you see this as a challenge and opportunity from the Nile to be as a source of uh, uh, food security and nutrition for uh, the population along the Nile Basin, given yes, that yes. the demography is growing. Yes, yes. You, you need to appreciate the fact that the waters of the Nile is of uttermost importance as a resource. Mm -hmm. And the centrality of water for food security sure. should be straightforward. And all economies of member states are transforming. Transformation of an economy implies moving from peasant to more modern, and more modern means moving from rain-fed to irrigation. You require water for modernization of agriculture, modernization of agriculture for increased food security. If you can see the waters of the Nile and all the lakes associated with it, then you see the importance of this Nile waters to food security, to agricultural modernization. And that's exactly the purpose of managing these shared resources among countries cooperatively. The efficiency of managing this resource, which is shared, can only happen if it is done on a cooperative basis. And that's what it is. It also touches on environmental conservation because water, water cycle, Water cycle involves conservation of forest cover because of transpiration and evaporation. Yes, and evaporation and wetland conservation. And that is what is really of general interest for Nile Basin Initiative so that pro programs and projects 
from the Nile, take into account environmental concerns. So these concerns are mainstream in our planning processes. This is very central. So take it from me as a minister, and I'm talking with minister colleagues. The National Water, the NBI, the Nile Basin Initiative, which brings member countries together in a formulated framework that regulates how this resource is used is very key to food security. It's also very key as a resource for, 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 for food, for nutrition, because most of the communities surrounding these resources, they get fish. Fishing is a major activity. And we have projects, the Lake Victoria project. All these are intended to involve communities in conserving and at the same time increasing their income so that they have transformed their lives. Okay, in yes. concern of the environmental aspect, especially yes, yes. in terms of managing the waste, the urban waste, yes. either it is uh, solid waste, urban waste, or, yeah, urban or waste. Yeah. Yes. Most of the Nile uh, countries, uh, we see that they just dump their garbage uh, outside in the towns and cities. Uh, the dumping sites or, or along the tributaries and it is it is all quasi not managed so with the first mm -hmm. rain it goes inside the river and this may be in, be a danger in addition to the use of uh, excessive use of fertilizers uh, pesticides and uh, insecticides uh, uh, and also yes, fertilizers so how do you see that how we can convert this uh, uh, from waste, unmanaged waste, to useful uh, source of... It is uh, true, it is yeah. very true that there is uh, evident de degradation, mm -hmm. there is evident deforestation, mm -hmm. there is evident when you come to all these urban areas, there is pollution, both of sold, sold waste uh, materials coming in the lakes, mm -hmm. but also you should be comforted by the fact that literally every member country has what you would call a national environment management authority. These authorities need to be strengthened to deal with this situation. But the situation is recognized. The risks of pollution of our lake waters and river waters is recognized and countries have laws and regulations. It is only enforcement which is a weakness. And once we strengthen the enforcement arm of these institutions, this situation will be handled because we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Conservation, indeed, which takes into account the development and management of these resources on a sustainable basis must invariably address the question of pollution of the degradation of deforestation. Last so let me put this qu qu clearly. Mm. Nations have environmental management authorities mandated to conserve uh, the environment. And these institutions are there. They have a legal framework. The challenge is enforcement and having the capacity to do so. And, that is, and that, is, that, that is the challenge that we are really trying to address. Can it be extended to be what basin-wide authority to manage that, that, that issue within the Nile Basin Initiative? Within the Nile Basin Initiative, yeah. very clearly. Yeah. In fact, the initiative can draw on the legal frameworks of these countries and play a coordination role. Okay. Yes. Last question on the investments and infrastructures. Uh, some of the Nile Basin countries are witnessing heavy, uh, uh, large-scale yes, land yes, acquisitions, yes. Uh, and also this in forms of uh, investments, but uh, this is uh, said to be affecting the small-scale farmers and family farmers uh, in going these big, big, uh, big projects. Uh, some denominate is uh, land grabbing or resource grabbing or whatever uh, they can call it. No, How do you see this, 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 is, uh, this phenomenon? Is it uh, really witnessed? Or the things I so? see on the horizon and mm -hmm. which is happening. Yeah. You have big investment projects, particularly infrastructure development projects of irrigation, infrastructure development 
of dams, okay. hydroelectricity dams. For instance, in Uganda's case, mm -hmm. we had own Falls Dam, an old dam constructed during colonial time, 1954. Recently, we had Bujagari Hydro Power Station, and that has been commissioned, and new ones are being developed. Karuma, Isimba, and so on. These programs and projects are intended to provide energy or electricity because the nexus between water security, energy security, and food security are interlinked. Yes. Are interlinked. So they will benefit, not disadvantage. They will benefit even small-scale farmers by extending electricity to them for them to be able to irrigate their small farms and increase productivity in their farms. In addition, there are also, of course, big farms, big commercial farms. Some of these are acting as outgrowers. So there is, there is a maturity, mm -hmm. the maturity, because you, you have to have both. The small scale farmers, mm -hmm. particularly if you organize them into cooperative, they can come very big, but you can also have outgrower schemes where you have a nucleus farm with small ones being feeding into the big one. And that's the way to go. Okay. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, His Excellency Minister, Permanent Minister of uh, uh, Water of the Republic of Tanzania, mm -hmm. United Republic of Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, welcome and thank you for accepting uh, the interview with you. Uh, my name is Mohamed Yassin and I am coming from the University of Udini in Italy, mm -hmm. which is conducting research on uh, economics, ecology, landscape and territory, mm -hmm. focusing on the Nile Basin issues. Okay. Yeah. And uh, today I'm going to uh, ask you some few questions concerning the Nile Basin. Right. First question is going to be around the food uh, security and nutrition mm -hmm. uh, in uh, wa uh, basin wide. Uh, uh, dimensions mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, uh, we know that the, the Nile Basin is facing huge uh, challenges among mm -hmm. which for some countries uh, uh, demographic uh, growth mm -hmm. and uh, the need for more resources uh, of water and land and other, other resources mm -hmm. for the livelihood of the people yeah. so in, in, in this perspective how do you see the position of uh, Tanzania Mm -hmm. uh, within the Nile Basin uh, preparing countries. Yeah, let me thank you for this opportunity. Um, as you have said, my name is Engineer Mbog of Takamba. I'm the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Water Tanzania. Um, as you have asked me about the situation of food security, the first thing which I think I have to commend the Nile Basin is that we are now looking into sustainable utilization of the water resource. And when it comes to the utilize, uh, issue on food security, you know now uh, with the climate change, uh, things have been changing, the weather is very unpredictable. But now with the proper utilization of water efficiently, we riparian countries in the Nile Basin, we are working together. Uh, maybe I'll just recall, I, we are chairing one of the steering committee in the regional agricultural trade and the productivity project, of which we were trying to see that we use proper um, technologies for water utilization so that the production, the water productivity in agriculture could be enhanced. So for Tanzania, we are doing very well with regard to food security. I think for East African and Central Africa countries, I think we are among those who are food secure. For example, even last year and this year, we have self-sufficiency in food more than 100%. So what I can say with regard to the Nile Basin, we are sharing some technological advancements. The, the use of water, also putting the infrastructure, like storage infrastructures for irrigation and other activities. So we, we are moving. And I can say Nile Basin have been very, very helpful in that, especially it have been a knowledge base. Good. On the environmental aspect of the Nile Basin, mm. 
We know that uh, the airborne waste, either it is solid or liquid, mm. and uh, the urban garbage is not well managed among mm. the among the Nile basin. Mm. And uh, especially if we look to the uh, tributaries and and, mm. and the lakes, and mm. uh, people dump their mm. urban waste. Uh, along the tributaries of the river mm. and as, as well as some industries discharge without mm. treatment of their mm. of, of their of the, of the, their products mm. of their waste so yeah. this is uh, making a challenge especially uh, for for the lake victoria and other as, 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 a, as mm. a part of of, of, of the basin how yeah. do you see the attention uh, paid to that from uh, 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 from Tanzanian perspective or mm. from w uh, basin wide perspective? Uh, yeah, um, I can say basin wide, mm. the issue of environment is critical. Okay. But for example, when I talk of uh, Lake Victoria, for example, maybe let's we all agree that um, when we don't take the, the environment issues aspects and its alarming um, approaches seriously, of course we are going to suffer. Because uh, for my case, I look into the uh, sediment transport in our tributaries which are contributing to the, to the Lake Victoria, which later uh, joins River Nile. But also you have mentioned about the pollution. Um, maybe what I can say for Lake Victoria, we have a project which is called Lake Victoria Environment Management Project. This project is really looking into even levels of pollution, um, the extent of our, our water release, uh, the pollutions, uh, what is really released. Actually, they are taking some serious measures, but what I can say, that needs to be enhanced. We need to work hard on that so that the pollution levels will be reduced, so that even the marine uh, inhabitants also will be safe. And currently, for example, for Tanzania, we are really working very closely because this is part of the, 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 the environment aspects. And now what we are seeing is that those industries which are releasing their effluents to the, to the lake, they need to have a water release permit. Uh, the release permit, which are slowly is going on, but the sensitization has been done strongly to those who are uh, releasing or emitting their effluents in the, in, the, in, the, in the lake. So I can say more efforts, more sensitization needs to be done because even you take some samples from Lake Victoria, you can see the levels of pollution they are in there. But the bad thing which we are seeing as a consequence of, uh, of uh, pollution is the incoming of what we call water hyacinth. In Lake Victoria, the, the generation and germination of water hyacinth is, 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 ter is terrible. So all these things are being worked out. Of course, there are mechanical ways and the biological means, but all are geared towards controlling the pollution. So I fully agree with you that more work needs to be done, sensitization needs to be done also. Good. In concern of the resource management, the common resource, mm. uh, especially the base, uh, the resource base, land mm. and water. Mm. Uh, we cannot only focus only on water or land, but we have to co to consider it in ecosystem mm. of, uh, perspective. Mm. Concerning the lands and the, the call for large scale land acquisition or mm. foreign direct investment, mm. some uh, people argue that there is a phenomenon mm. of what they call land grabbing or resource grabbing. Mm. So, but uh, we see some countries are rejecting this and they see this as a beneficial uh, investment which we can uh, induce development for, mm. for the people. They are concerned for small scale farmers and family farmers on mm. this because this large scale uh, investments or, or projects does, doesn't consider uh, this. In, in, in perspective of a basin wide uh, uh, how do you see this phenomenon and uh, wh what is your, your vision in this? Here? Yeah, maybe let me also refute to the land grabbing. Okay. Yeah, you see it has been so prominent. I okay. remember I attended even one meeting. It appeared that this land grabbing is now mm. a big topic. But mm. what I'm saying for our Nile Basin, even for my country, mm. you see, um, when you want to make some developments, 
there is an important, there is, it is important to see the coexistence between uh, the big investor and our smallholder farmers. Mm -hmm. So um, what I can say is that there is no land grabbing, but mm -hmm. of, of course some people, uh, they trespass in allowing the, the land to be taken by big investors. But if they follow the, a good process, then these two people can coexist. And once they coexist, I'm sure we can have development. I have an example in Tanzania where we decided that uh, we will employ, we'll give uh, uh, land to one investor. And then it was like a public-private uh, public partnership. So then when that investor invested in that land, he was doing agriculture. Then he promoted the small-scale farmers also because he have the capacity, he have the capital. So he shared the technologies. He was even providing them with uh, uh, fertilizers, various inputs. And at the end of the day, that is re well recorded, the production of rice for this small-scale farmer was higher than the production of rice for that big investor. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can say, it depends with the policy levels. There are some people who are not honest, who are not uh, clean, that they just sell it for the sake of that. But if it's, been, it's, it's well organized, we can have that coexistence. The big investor comes, then he works with the smaller farmer, and then uh, I think it, it goes very well. But what I can say for these resources, with water, we are looking for integrated water resource <laughs> management, which we really look water in, t in its totality. When we go to land, apart from investing in land, but even the management, that's why you find that we have the inter, uh, integrated watershed management. So we are trying to look into that, but I uh, refute completely the land grabbing. Mm -hmm. For Tanzania, we don't have it. It's just a misconception. Mm -hmm. And in some areas, there, there may be, but for Tanzania, we don't have that because all land is owned by the government. That's good. Yeah. So you are uh, realistic and optimistic about the future, uh, future development of Tanzania and of course of the Nile Basin as a whole? Yes, I'm optimistic. Really. Um, there are different scenarios, but what I can say, we need to cooperate. Yep. Cooperation is so vital because when you talk of water resource without cooperation, it will be very difficult. Just imagine that uh, Egypt is further downstream. We are at the upstream. So if we don't cooperate, but uh, what I can say, with the technologies and scientific tools, management tools which we have acquired, I don't think that the Nile people are so, uh, are so, uh, are so insensitive that they can use that water to affect the other one in the downstream. We have good tools where you want to have to go for water, uh, management, utilize it efficiently. So I'm optimistic and I'm really looking forward that we can even come to the River Basin Commission which will help manage the whole uh, Nile River and uh, we are seeing that we, we, we can do better. And uh, last I can say we want to see the win-win situation and the benefit sharing for the Nile River water. Okay, thank you Honorable Minister. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Thank uh, welcome, and I'm Jasmine Samuel uh, from South Sudan General uh, Assembly. And thank you for accepting uh, uh, to interview you. Uh, my name is Mohammed Yassin, I'm coming from the University of Udine in Italy, uh, where we are doing research on the uh, economics, landscape, uh, ecology, and territory of uh, the Nile Basin, focusing on the Nile Basin. And uh, we are here conducting some interviews in order to see uh, the opinion of the key policy makers and key informants about that. Yeah. So thank you for, uh, again for accepting the interview. Uh, my first question goes to uh, around the food security and nutrition uh, in, in South Sudan and in, uh, also in Nile Basin uh, uh, perspective. Uh, some countries in the Nile Basin have uh, this uh, demographic growth and increasing population, mm. which is not the case of South Sudan. Mm. But South Sudan has uh, other problems 
of food security and nutrition because it is mm. newly country, there is lack of infrastructures and other aspects. Mm. So from your point of view, how do you see that and how do you evaluate the food security and nutrition in, in, in South Sudan and in the Nile Basin as a whole? Uh, thank you uh, for the interview. Uh, actually from this uh, point, I want to say that uh, you know uh, what is uh, South Sudan and who is uh, South Sudan. Yeah. Um, South Sudan uh, got its independence and it is now three years and it started very well um, in form of uh, food security. Uh, we, we, have, we have the rain available and uh, people who are doing the, the agriculture and the food security issues was not a problem actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, from um, the beginning of the CPA, it was a problem because uh, uh, the, because people were just uh, coming to the peace. Uh, it was a little bit uh, problem, but in the two years, it has improved actually from in the areas of uh, food security. But again, now I can't tell you actually because now, as you have seen, that we are now in conflict and. Uh, uh, what conflict mean actually you see it doesn't uh, give more opportunity for the people actually to go for more uh, production of the food security uh, but uh, however uh, some of the areas are uh, trying their level best uh, to produce but again issues of the flood happened and this actually affected uh, the, the food security and uh, that is why if some of the areas in South Sudan uh, doesn't uh, produce much, it is uh, because of the uh, um, rainfall and then the, uh, the issue of the floods. Yeah, because they are tempted, but with the flood, everything was destroyed. Mm. So in this case, the government is trying its level west areas which are affected with the conflict and with the flood, they are trying their level west to really cover the areas of the food uh, security. With the support, of course, with support of the uh, uh, other uh, countries. Along the, the baseline, uh, let me give examples of Uganda and even Kenya. Mm -hmm. They are uh, well, and uh, you can't compare them mm -hmm. to the case of South Sudan. Yeah. 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 In case of population also, uh, the same. But we are trying our level best to improve on our food security sector actually so that to give more opportunity to our people to, to engage and even to compete in uh, production of food security actually. Mm -hmm. The minister is doing their best. Good. And from the Nile Basin perspective, do yeah. you expect the other uh, countries from the Nile Basin yeah. uh, help in pushing for South Sudan to, in order to uh, enhance its food security? Or, or you you will depend on uh, your own resources. In this this case, in this case, the, the discourse of the cooperation is very important. Yeah, yeah. For for sure. Especially for the infrastructure erections yeah. and so and also exchange of uh, capacities yeah. and, and and experience. Yeah. For 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 sure, that is the meaning of the of the cooperation. Uh, when we become a cap, uh, effective um, in yeah. the cooperation, then. Uh, definitely, they will uh, uh, they will build the capacity of South Sudan actually in terms of infrastructure and all this. But currently, I want to say that the the protocol and even the agreement is still in the parliament. So we are looking you mean the forward the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the the agreement of the base uh, yeah, co the cooperation of the base yeah, yeah. is still. Okay. Uh, in the hands of the parliament, mm -hmm. it is passed from the executive to the parliament. So the committee is still uh, looking, trying to analyze. And mm -hmm. with the understanding that since the agreement started in 90 something, so 99. we are one, well, yeah, 99, we were one Sudan. Okay. And we need to uh, carefully analyze the agreement based on our terms as the, the, independent, the, the, the independent country. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, on the issue of the environmental aspects, the management of the environment and the pollution and the urban waste management and the discharge of the garbage in the Nile and, and 
is this is a, a, a big challenge for the quality also of the water oh. and this is uh, also the case of, of uh, South Sudan could be influenced by the upper the the the, the, oh, yeah. the down the, the, the the upper the, the, the upper 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 stream and countries, the, yeah. yeah, and also it, it yeah, will it can is, influence also yeah. the downstream. Mm. So in this perspective, South mm. Sudan is new is new country, country. within the Nile Basin, mm. not new mm. new as independent country, yes, but it yes. was existing before yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, it was existing. So what so, is your perspective in this yeah. one, and also As in terms of uh, um, forestation and deforestation mm. and, yeah. and, and all these uh, yeah. environmental As, uh, aspects? Yes, I've uh, said to you that. Uh, we are going to look into agreement. I'm sure that all these issues are there in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, our, our parliament will do good legislation on that one, actually. Through reading the agreement through, they will see what are the terms, whether the terms are good for us or not. They will go through and according to that line, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for sure, we have the, the ministries in place. The Minister of Environment is in place, mm -hmm. and uh, they have all the policies actually to deal with that. We have the restructures in, in place to look into these issues. Yeah. So whether it is affecting us positively or negatively, they will also look to it. It depends based on the agreement actually. The agreement will be discussed and then uh, ministries related to such issues in the agreement, they can be called by the parliament to come and ex explain better, better. Like now we are here with the Minister of Water and uh, they know exactly what is it there and they understand it uh, better mm -hmm. according to technicality. Okay. And uh, such issues of environment, it is technical issues and the relevant departments will deal with it, including the relevant institutions. Sector. The last question concerning the infrastructure and the management of the resources. Mm -hmm. uh, South Sudan is trying to attract investment in order to come in and help in the development and the, the uh, erection of yeah. new infrastructures from road to uh, dams uh, to other infrastructures. And of course, uh, South Sudan has no hydropower generation mm. and there is plan to do that uh, mm. I think between Juba and Numoli and Numoli uh, yeah and there, mm. there is a plan for that yeah. so if you if you have idea you mm. can just give us uh, an idea within uh, the context of mm. the Nile Basin mm. so the Nile Basin countries mm. will agree that also mm. South Sudan will have it is mm. sufficiency from hydropower and it is right for development yeah yeah even before that mm. uh, we have in place uh, to, to establish the, the hydropower in Fala, in, in Nimule. Um, but due to the, to the current uh, situation, you see that uh, investors will grow and the activities are not as, uh, as normal. Mm -hmm. uh, but the minister have still the plan for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that in the nearest future, the minister is uh, going to implement something in regard to the follow mm -hmm. and the details are with the minister. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Thank you very yeah. much for your time.